All right, I like my starting options here. I've got three options that all look pretty appealing, more so than the boss relic, which is a bit of a gamble on the ironclad. Is it Guardian again? No, it's Hexagos today. I'm glad for a reprieve from the Guardians. Question is, as usual, how many elites in what order do we do? And the answer looks like two. Pretty much no matter where you go, you're doing two elites here. Technically, you could get away with one. The first elite here is forced. Anytime I see a formation like this on the map, I'm not going to boss swap for the most part because a low variance roll could spell your doom. If you get a busted crown and no damage cards, it's already over as soon as you get to floor six here. So that means the second elite is either this one or the burning elite. And if we go the burning elite, uh, I see some problems with that. No fire before this elite is already kind of a disaster. And then no fire at all. Actually, you just get the one before Hexa goes. That's pretty unacceptable. So the only path that even looks halfway decent here is this one. Get a fire before the first elite. I'd much rather go four combats here to get potions for the elite uh, into a second elite with no reprieve. Yikes. There's some fires afterwards, and if we're in really bad shape after the first elite, there's the... The Coward's Path. Take the white to get the extra rest sites, I guess. And then we can decide event or combat after that, but... This is the only path that looks halfway decent, like I said. No shops on this path mean that Transform is a little bit more appealing. Forced Elite, to me, means that Transform is a little bit less appealing. Uh, recall last time we transformed two, we got, like, Corruption Limit Break, I think, or something like that. Which are theoretically useful cards later, but short term. They don't help with the Elite, but is, again, mandatory. Personally, I'm heavily inspired to take a Common Relic here. Yeah, nice and safe. Definitely nice and safe. Almost all of the Common Relics provide some kind of advantage. And even the bad Common Relics are best when you get them early, like... Tiny Chest, or Omomori, or Juzu Bracelet. And this would actually be a genuinely really good time to find a Maw Bank, right? Because it would just give us money for the entire act. Maw Bank would be as good as Old Coin. If I were to remove something, it would probably just be a strike. I'm perfectly happy with five strikes and offends going through this act one. You don't really want to remove that many cards going into Hexaghost anyway. Give me a common relic. Get a bag of preparation. That's no common relic. That's uncommonly good. Giving us two more cards on turn one. Never having a bad turn one, essentially, is how I like to think of this thing, and that's always great. The Ironclad slash Silent. Double starter relic. What I like most about Bag of Prep is that it makes cards that generate energy much easier to take. Already, we want to take Bloodletting now. And it can help set up powers. It just ensures that you never draw. You know, if you do draw five strikes or five defends on turn one, at least you're also drawing something else. That sort of deal. Let's see. We definitely want to strike the front louse so that we can kill it next turn? Hmm. Only if I draw a strike, I guess. Interesting problem. All right, well, let's hit them both. That way we can at least hit, kill the back one with Bash. But I think we might actually get bodied here by this front louse. Since we threw too many strikes on turn one, we now can't kill it. Yeah, we can't kill it. But I can block for 15. Take only one more. That seems fine. The back one can't attack next turn, so it has to buff. We're guaranteed to draw two strikes to kill the front one. So yeah, we take two damage, we leave the fight. Beards and Bacon with three years of support on your way to four metric years. Martin scores easy with 27. May I get to 27 0? It's quite a, uh, quite a lofty goal, but I hope so. And Hapfi with 21 months of the Prime sub. My favorite, favorite relics from each rarity. Favorite common relic? Probably the Preserved Insect, although Bag of Prep is also a good contender. Favorite uncommon relic is going to be. Hmm.
Tough choice between mummified hand and, oh yeah, like boat thingy, mummy hand, and um, toxic and frozen egg both are, are all pretty good candidates here. I'm not actually sure which one to pick, but there's a, a quick handful of you, top five, top four, or whatever. Favorite rare relic is definitely pocket watch. Favorite boss relic is runic pyramid. Favorite shop relic, probably brimstone. Although I really like a lot of shop relics. The waffle, too, of course. Tough bandages is a good pick. Tingsha's fun. Have I played Into the Breach? We did a ton of Into the Breach, Mr. Gregor. We, um, and we did unfair difficulty on every squad except the secret squad on stream when, uh, Advanced Edition came out. I was, I was trounced by secret squad on unfair difficulty. I couldn't beat it. Armaments with more cards on turn one is is really nice. I'm thinking about True Grit here, but looking at the extra card draw, Armaments becomes a really good pick because upgraded Armaments lets you upgrade all of your cards and even unupgraded Armaments chooses one of the cards in your hand. Therefore, the more cards you have in your hand, the more options you have for what that upgrade is. That's a form of scaling. Crimstone is just another gameplay setting. Yeah, I, I do like the armaments here. True Git can be a, a game changer over the course of a run. It, I think it might even be very wise in general to pick up the first targeted exhaust option that you see as clad, but I really do like this arma in the current position. So let's give it some love here. And I am going to lock us into a hard pool fight later on. I think with the bag of prep, we'll be just fine. Got some really interesting turn one draws going on, though, that's for sure. Imagine this without the bag of prep, though. We'd have drawn four blocks in the Ascender's Bane into this opening. That would have been miserable. At least now I can bash strike the little guy. Or I can armaments the bash and upgraded bash on the Acid Slime. Hold on. Can I kill the Acid Slime next turn? Because if I can, I want to. We are guaranteed to get three strikes. With Weaken and Vulnerable, I think they do six, right? 6 times 1.5 times 0.75 is 6.75. That's right. So they do 6. So we'd have to bring it to 18 or... Uh, just 18 or less, huh? No, there's no way. I'd have to bash strike, surely. If we bash strike, we deal 17. And then next turn, we deal 18. That's enough. So we can kill it next turn by doing Bash Strike. But then we take 6 plus 6. If we Bash Strike right now, the next turn we can Strike, Strike, Defend. Worst case scenario, we're taking 7, which is less than 12. So we should do this. And sometimes we only take 3. Although we can take more on a future turn here. We can take a, a full 12 here, potentially. Why do I open my mouth? It was possible we didn't take more than three. Uh, as it is, we end up taking seven plus three, which is still less than 12. So we still came out ahead versus killing the green, green slime first. So I definitely think we made the right choice here. Blood potion's an excellent early find, a little bit more healing. Rest in a jar, you can think of it as. And Anger is spectacular with Bag of Preparation, a zero-cost attack that will draw into more easily. It's also a pretty good armaments target. Terrainco with a 35 months. Falcon says, why is A18 so hard with Silence? Because the elites in particular really want you to kill them quickly uh, on the highest ascension levels. They get really nasty abilities such that you have to end fights fast. And Silent just is not very good at ending fights fast. Silent wants to hang around in a fight, slowly whittle down her opponent, and keep full blocking at every opportunity. High Ascension doesn't let you do that. Terrainco! Did I thank you already? Thanks for 35 months. I think I did thank you already. Have another one. <laughs> Juicy Clash, though. If only the Clash was actually usable. Ever. It would be great. It seems like so much damage until you realize how rarely you can play it. 
Titan Wave is not the worst card in this position either. I mean, Clash is the worst card in this position. But uh, it's all right. Wow, I can upgrade this Armaments right now? That's kind of hot. I can also upgrade the Anger or the Bash, but I say we upgrade Armaments. Unless we're transforming here. We might be transforming here. It's a nice upgrade, though. Definitely makes our first Elite a lot safer. But we can upgrade the Armaments before the Elite anyway, and then we'll have a random card. Gem Scampy with a five months. Slay that Spire. Transforming a card is pretty sweet. We get to get rid of a Strike card, which is what I would transform here. You might argue for Defend, but I think with an Anger, I'm always getting rid of my Strikes. My general rhetoric is that if you're not beating the Act Boss, you should transform over removing. But if you need the upgrade for an Elite, you should upgrade. I don't feel like we need the upgrade for an Elite. Let's transform. Let's see what we get. Dustbin Goblin, thanks for the Tier 1 sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. We get an Evolve. I'm quite happy with that. That's definitely going to be better than a strike. Any fight where we would need the extra strike, the evolve will help us out. That's going to be useful against sentries if we encounter them, and useful later in the game against hexaghost, plus great for act three and four. Right now, though, it is worse than a strike. That's the simple truth. In this fight, anyway. What I mean by right now. Let's see. I'd have to draw Bash Strike Anger. Or Bash Anger Anger. Attack for 11 next turn. Let's do 19. I'm going to try reading this one hit point. Easy. 74 hit points. And I am thrilled with a headbutt here, although you can also make a very reasonable argument for Reckless Charge. Putting it dazed into the draw pile has a combo with Evolve. Can become draw positive if we upgrade the Evolve. That part's kind of cool. Here's it going, Dustbin Goblin. Dustbin says, long time YouTube watcher, first time Twitch subber. Hoping to pick up some tips and tricks for E20. You're definitely in the right place. Thing is, Headbutt is also awesome with Evolve. Headbutt's just a really good card. And I love it for putting Anger back on top. I'm happy to pick up a later Reckless Charge, but I want this Headbutt. You can put a status card back on top. You can put a good card back on top. You can do anything you want. We have some extra hit points here, thanks to Burning Blood. Very happy with a very easy combat. I'm actually happy we haven't found too many potions yet either. Hoping we get a potion from this as we go into our elite fight. Question is, do I Arma defend, play an unupgraded strike, or Arma the strike, take two, since we're overhealed anyway, to deal three more. We have 19 damage in the draw pile, so as long as we're striking this one, we can get a kill anyway. Let's upgrade the defend then. That way Headbutt kills this one next turn. We might take a hit from this thing. Cool. It's just Headbutt Anger. I do 19, only if I draw the Bash or three strikes and an Anger. Maybe the defend is safer. Three. Give me the defend. Yeah, that worked out. Okay, so we leave this fight on full HP, which is as good as you could possibly hope for going into the elite. Don't get the potion we wanted, but we do get offered a freaking carnage, which sure does the damage.
Hmm. Carnage might even be sufficiently powerful that we slap an upgrade on it instead of armaments now. Carnage plus with a headbutt definitely slaps. Let's do it. All right. Yeah, and this is the downside to Carnage, definitely. We don't have to keep Carnage if we don't want to, but I don't see why I wouldn't play it here. It's a pretty acceptable draw pile, too. We have most of our block cards in the draw pile. So this fight is definitely a question of how many times we get to play Carnage and how many of those times do we get to apply Vulnerable for. I could play this Evolve to avoid redrawing it, or we can deal six damage. I think the way this fight goes, I want to get this out of the draw pile. Okay, do I want to headbutt Carnage? I don't think so. I might want to headbutt Bash and play Armaments Bash. That can probably secure us the kill. That'll mean taking 15 more damage next turn, 10 damage this turn, but I think that's probably worth it. Because if I just put Carnage on top, we don't do that much damage. Kind of waste the armaments. Could just put an Anger on top, play Anger, upgrade a Defend, take not that much. But that's not getting us through the fight quickly enough. I think we need to get the Vuln down for the next Carnage. Thankfully we didn't draw the Carnage. Our ideal next turn is that we draw a Carnage Headbutt, and then we can Vuln Carnage twice. Definitely got to trade some health in this fight to get ahead here. Did not get Carnage, unfortunately. I think it might be enough though, right? Yeah, we're at 42 now. We're about to have minus two strength, so this will do... 26 times 1.5 is 39 damage, and then the headbutt will kill. So we're fine. But you can see that if we hadn't face tanked um, the hit in order to play Bash, then we would have had to face tank this hit instead, which would deal even more damage to our face. So by taking that aggressive line through the fight, we end up saving quite a bit of health here. Might have been possible to, to save a little bit more, but we're going to be in a strong position either way. Oh my god, we're going to be in a really strong position here because we have freaking Gambling Chip Bag of Prep as the first two relics. Synergy is happening here. Gambling Chip says, on turn one, discard any number of cards, then draw that many. So normally you can discard up to five to draw up to five. Now we can discard up to seven because of Bag of Prep to draw up to seven more cards allowing us to look at up to 14 cards on turn one, making it exceedingly easy to get stuff like turn one Carnage or turn one Evolve, or now turn one Feel No Pain, which I am super going to click on because it's a very powerful combo card that works with a lot of things in Spire, and we are well ahead of the curve now. We got Bang of Prep, Gambling Chip, a Carnage Plus, two very strong potions, and only one more elite before Hexago, so I can easily get away with a Feel No Pain here. And then we're going to look for a targeted exhaust card like a True Grit or a Burning Pact. No, this interaction does not depend on which of the two relics you have first. This combo always works well together. It's just really good. Samamir with seven months of support. Thank you, thank you. Hmm, how do I want this to play? Let's discard Carnage so I can headbutt it. Unless I'm playing Feel No Pain and getting block off of it, but I think I want to get it back. It's full block at the moment. It's 28. draw any other attack, we're good. Which we are. Perfect fight. We heal six. And if we get a potion, I can just drink the blood pot, which we do. So we're back to full HP now with two potions. Now that we have a 
Feel no pain in the deck. Something like an Infernal Blade becomes a bit more appealing. Generate a random attack and gain three block. You can also upgrade that random attack with the armaments, potentially. Parallel 3D with the Prime sub. The full year get. Thank you, thank you. Are there any relics which do depend on the order that they are picked up in? Yes. Uh, off the top of my head, the, the quick situations for those are relics that apply debuffs to enemies at the start of combat. So, Bag of, Pre bag of Marbles, the Red Mask, and the Twisted Funnel depend on their order, which can be relevant for enemies that have artifact charges, because the ordering of your relics will then affect which debuffs are blocked by the artifact. Um, and it also matters for any artifact that generates an orb at the start of combat. So the cracked core and the nuclear battery and the symbiotic virus are all order dependent. Take that Infernal Blade. And we're definitely going to go into, into an elite here. We have two excellent potions. I mean, Liquid Memories, Carnage, very strong. We can also help use that to help potentially get through Hexaghost here. So far, it seems like we are off to a very strong star, which I always like to see when streaking here, because it makes my life a lot easier. Ink Bottle! Whenever we play 10 cards, draw one card. All of our relics draw more cards so far, and that's pretty dang strong in general. I think the Ironclad can really struggle with card draw, so having a ton of it for free from our relics is superb. How do I want this fight to go? I'm happy to use my fire potion here, although we don't need to. Who took my cheese? I can give you a cheese-themed dad joke, but I can't guarantee that it will be any Gouda. No refunds. Carabolas Streams, thanks for the Prime sub and the 12 months of support. Also just, like, bonk these fools. We have Feel No Pain and Evolve. Kind of wins the fight, right? Only once I actually start drawing the days is the thing. But if I discard everything except Evolve on turn one, then we redraw into those dazed awfully quick now, don't we? Let's try it. This is taking the defensive route. Next turn we can play Armaments Defend. That's pretty good. Let's play the Infernal Blade. It's only three block instead of five, but we get to do some damage this turn with Heavy Bonk. I like it. Oh, Carnage is here. We could Carnage Strike, take only 10. Although if I Armaments Defend, don't play the Carnage. It blocks for three. And you know what? That's even better. Oh, yeah, because I discarded it in turn one. That makes sense. So headbutt armaments, I guess. So I can upgrade the anger. Headbutt, headbutt, armaments. Be a block card next turn. Just guaranteeing our safety on turns where I can. Heavy blade plus.
And we do want to set up Ink Bottle as much as possible by playing more cards before the end of the fight. Um, I could even really get extreme with this if I really want to. That feels like complete overkill. I'm good with seven. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh no. It's happening. The easiest infinite in the world. Actually, that second win looks insane, right? Second win destroying status cards in the Hexaghost fight is a big deal. Fistfuls of cheese, thanks for the prime sub in the 23 months. So from this position, we have what's uh, easy access to an infinite combo, essentially. With the Sundial, every three times we shuffle the draw pile, we'll gain two energy. To fully abuse the Sundial on Ironclad, you want to use cards that exhaust other cards. To exhaust all the cards in your deck, except for one or two that say draw cards on them, and then just use those in a loop to play each other. The reason this is particularly exciting is because the Bag of Preparation, the Gambling Chip, and the Ink Bottle together are going to make it way easier for us to exhaust all the other cards in the deck as soon as we find cards that do so. And that means we get a very quick and fast setup into an infinite combo, which is going to be obscenely strong. Humble Strike is one of the pieces we can use for that combo. Meanwhile, Second Wind is an excellent card to get that combo set up. And is just a really broken card in general. So I'm going to click on the Second Wind. I don't actually need to use the Sundial here if we get a Dark Embrace. Now we can upgrade the Armaments. Although we could also consider upgrading Feel No Pain. With, uh, again, our, our immense potential for card draw. I think Arma upgrades pretty good. Telemachus, thanks for the 14 months. How many is a Baylor's dozen? Not nearly enough, I say. That's a bunch of slimes. And I've got an Arma Plus, which looks quite excellent here. What would I like to draw into? Headbutt. Headbutt upgraded can kill one. I do like Arma into Anger Strike Strike. That only kills again one of them, though. Carnage is also acceptable here. With Carnage, we can kill two of them. I can Carnage, Carnage one, Anger Strike another. I think that's the best we're going to get. Rob Zor with 40 months of support, 4 metric years, and OCV 28 with a 9 months. Twitch baby get. A card that can hit multiple enemies at the same time is definitely something this deck is lacking currently. Relative weakness for the deck at the moment. Although that can be excusable at times. If your single target is good enough, then even the multi-enemy fights aren't too bad. Could have set up the Sundial in this fight. Maybe should have. Hmm. Impervious is not the sort of card that helps us beat Hexagos, but is the sort of card that's really awesome. Ease an aid with 10 months of the Prime Sub. Just hoping it goes all the way. Me too. Very hard to turn down an Impervious under any circumstances. 30 block plus exhaust is just a, a basically an entire turn to yourself to do whatever you wish. That's quite excellent. Are we too healthy for Hexagos? Not if I can just play Impervious on the, uh, on the burn turn, right? Just block it. Yeah, worst case, we take a bunch and then we still have a bunch of health. So, how do we feel about cards versus events here? With the Evolve and the Second Wind, I feel defensively okay against Hexaghost. Offensively, I think we're lacking a little bit here. We also have two potions. We've got pretty good reasons to take an event here, huh? An event could be an artifact, it could be an extra hard fight. 
could also be nothing. Remove would be good. Might have wanted to consider Blood for Blood over Impervious. I, I do recognize that that Blood for Blood could have been a good damage option. I agree with that. Let's have a look at all the possible events we could have. Big Fish would be gain 5 max health for us. Dead Adventure is awesome. That's We definitely want that. Golden Idol would be okay. We could lose some current health for an advantage long term. Mushrooms is better than a combat. Scrap Ooze is lose health and get a relic. Both of those are pretty good. Shining Light, lose health, get upgrades. Pretty good deal. Cleric is a card remove. That's okay. Serpent we ignore. That's a dead floor and bad. Wing Statue is not bad. We get a card remove. World of Goop, we lose health and gain money. So I'd say pretty much all of these are pretty positive. Of the unlikely events that we can get... Bonfire Spirits is, is better than Cleric is. With Duplicator, we can dupe the Feel No Pain or the Carnage. Get 50 gold. That won't help us this act, but I'm not too worried about dying to Hexaghost. I don't think that's going to happen. Match and Keep could be bad. Spin the Wheel could be bad. So of the Shrine events, there are a couple that are bad, but mostly good. So on average, pretty likely to get positive outcome from the event and moderately likely to get a strong positive outcome. Let's let's roll it. We get the 5 max L from the, the big fish. Or we could take the Relic and the Curse, which I don't love. With second win, the Curse is not so bad, but I don't think we should take this into Hexaghost. Let's just have even more hit points. You guys again. This is really easy act one. Just headbutt that. So we can go into the Hexagos fight with 80 hit points if we want to. Might as well set up a um, Sundial. Since I can. Full health. Not desirable. Oh, we get Disarm. Okay. That ought to help a bit, too. That gives us even more time against Hexaghost. So, I don't think we kill Hexaghost before Inferno, and I also don't think that we care. Is where we end up here. How's it going, Krogzar? Thanks for the generous Tier 2 sub and 52 heckin' months of support. Upgrade Disarm is definitely what I'm thinking about here. That'll make Hexaghost even less threatening, and it's a good upgrade long term. Armaments can hit Bash and Anger for us. That's no problem. I don't need Feel No Pain. The other arguable upgrade here would be Evolve, so that we can get even more card draw off the burns. But I'm definitely taking this Disarm. But yeah, I think there's there's maybe a reasonable discussion on Disarm versus Evolve here for the upgrade. Evolve lets us draw more cards per each burn drawn. That means second win is going to work better. It also means that we're going to draw the Angers faster. Disarm just makes the Hexaghost less threatening, which is going to save us quite a bit of health. Admittedly. This is one card more per burn we draw. Yeah, currently we don't make our own statuses, so that Disarm upgrade will definitely be better in the long term. It's like looking at Act 2, probably. Okay, let's upgrade the Disarm. Do get Disarm turn 1. Let's discard everything else as we're looking for Evolve and Feel No Pain to get down early. We might also hit Carnage, which is fine. Okay, the other option is we upgrade the Evolve and lose the Carnage. We do this fight without Carnage. Hmm. We 
good news is we got Impervious coming up next turn. Hmm. Could headbutt the Evolve. That's also true. Although if I if I want to play Armaments Carnage, I have to I have to use Headbutt and Liquid Memory shenanigans to get both in play, probably. Hmm. It's definitely going to be hard to do enough damage without uh, Carnage. We probably can do it with the Anger, but no, I don't think we should try. Skip Evolve for now, then. Oh, no. Hmm. Ink Bottle has betrayed us. It would have been a convenient full block. This would also be a convenient Liquid Memories on Armaments, huh? Hmm. I guess I don't need Feel No Pain Plus. We just go Feel No Pain, Defend, Strike here. Yeah, and we're redrawing into Evolve before we actually get the burns, so the Evolve did not need to be played the first time. We just go defend Field of Pain Strike here. We don't need to panic yet. Plenty of health, which we will need to use. Wondering if I wanted to play that bash. Okay, so we can choose not to play the Evolve if we think it's important. I think it is. It's more important than just getting 42 damage, though. That's the question. Let's just go Carnage Evolve. One in three that we draw Bash here, and I really want to play it if we do. I guess I go Arma first. Got Blood for Blood. That is definitely going to help. Thank you, Infernal Blade. So I guess the answer was get rid of Carnage the whole time. Okay. <laughs> oh well. We should be winning this fight, so all is well. Upgrade that Bash. There we go. Arma finally getting the job done. Perfect. Keep headbutting angers. Flip. Slap. Give him a slap. Did you know it's Inferno next turn? Excellent. Behold, Inferno. I know I could have killed, but this is funnier. Taunting the Hexagos. GG. Okay, that was no problem at all. We are definitely well ahead of the curve now. We've got lots of powerful defensive options for later in the game and an acceptable offensive engine for now. We're being offered Reaper Demon Form Berserk. A Reaper is definitely interesting here, although currently we lack the strength to make it powerful. Demon form could be a way for us to scale, but kind of awkward here. Don't really like Berserk much. Don't like any of these that much. Would have much preferred something like an Offering here, or a Corruption. I guess you could argue for Berserk because we have 
enough defense to get away with it, and we can consistently get it into play early, too. We'd really want an upgrade. It's not the world's worst berserk, I'll admit. And it can help making make playing some of the expensive cards like Bash and Carnage a bit easier. I'd prefer other ways of gaining energy, but I guess it could work. This is already a deck that wants lots of powers. There's definitely a problem when you get too many powers. Reaper can be very consistently nice, and we've already got the part of the exhaust energy, and that alone is good reason to take it. I'm going to grab Reaper here. I think I'm never unhappy with Reaper. And I'll skip these, uh, the colorless potion here, looking at our boss relics, which include Astrolabe, Cursed Key, Runic Cube. Oh my. What fun options here. All of these are cool in their own right. Cursed Key gives us more energy per turn, but curses us upon opening a non-boss chest, which can be quite the bad. Second Wind can delete curses. Of course, and the gambling chip can help with them too. Astrolabe would transform and upgrade three cards, probably get rid of three strikes here. That would give us potentially something good, but also potentially nothing, which is not what you want from your boss relic. Runic Cube, whenever we lose health, draw one. It can be a very powerful draw engine. Even more card draw added. And with the Sundial, even more card draw is a really powerful thing. I would actually strongly consider this Runic Cube. Plus, we have Reaper to heal back, too. I think it's between Key and Cube here. Curse Key is very consistently good with just having more energy. Being able to play Armaments plus Carnage plus Headbot or Armaments Defend Carnage is very valuable. Does Cube open more infinites? Kind of. Yeah, kind of. Cube definitely allows us to get energy from the Sundial more often, that's for sure. I feel like we're already headed towards a 10-card hand deck, though. I'm gonna grab the key here. Let's hit some shops, we're rich. Hey, a shop. Excellent. Probably don't want to do that. Ooh, this path looks nice. Look at all these fires. Upgrade everything. There's also... Maybe this path? Elite, elite... Meh. No, I think we go... Really shop here. Let me just do four combats. Combats will be easy. Most combats should heal us. Maybe after we evaluate the shop, we can we can say that we're actually good enough to do the Burning Elite and do three Elites. That'd be potentially a thing. If we get Preserved Insect or some other big spike of damage, like a Sling of Courage, that could also influence our decision. Definitely want to start here, though. Gives us the most options. From this shop, we can go anywhere in the act. So we have the most optionality from there. So I could play Reaper Impervious here. I don't actually think that's good enough. I am going to play the Impervious, though. Yeah, Carnage Impervious. Now we're talking. Usually go for the back guy first. He's ultimately the more threatening of the two. He's a jerk. The Mugger, he's called. Easy peasy. Get carnaged, friend. Secret carnage. Yeah, thanks, Sundial. Can I get away with my money? I will spend the fire potion if I have to. Fortunately, I do not.
mediocrity. Sabin with the Prime sub of the 22 months. Did you know you can use your Twitch Prime, which is free with Amazon Prime, to sub to free for your favorite streamer? Twitch Prime every time. Cleave, that's true. We don't have any AoE. I don't really consider unupgraded Cleave to actually help anything, though. It's not even enough to kill a gremlin. Although I suppose it's better than nothing, right? Hmm. Nah. Don't think that's cutting it. I don't think so. through a little more. Give me the defend plus back, I guess. One of the impervious for later in the fight. Don't know that that was quite the right choice. Looks like we're only going to be down two health, though, which is totally fine by me. Strength will make all of our other attacks do more damage, most crucially Reaper for more healing. It scales Anger really well also. Warcry Plus is admittedly also pretty good, works wonders with Evolve, and can be used to set up fun stuff with Reaper, blocks with Feel No Pain. But I think getting some Strength is more important here than the Warcry. That would make something like Cleave a little bit better. There's our AoE. Immolate is here. There's also, I note, a medical kit, which allows us to play status cards, causing them to exhaust instantly. Which, with Feel No Pain, is kind of a thing. Uh, also an on-sale True Grit, which is super getting purchased here. We saw a couple True Grits earlier. I passed on them to take other, arguably better cards. But we'd certainly still want one. Very expensive, this Immolate, at 176 gold, but well worth it. Um, actually, Juggernaut is also kind of insane here, right? Who's our act boss? Fighting Bronze Automaton. Man, Juggernaut. Juggernaut is interesting. This could be a shocking amount of damage in a clad deck. Especially with Second Wind. Immolate does so much better against the Elites, though, is the thing. Currently, we're really lacking against Slavers and Gremlin Leader. You could maybe solve those fights with the... Juggernaut, but it'll be much more easily solved by Immolate. Meanwhile, later on... Once we get to the boss fight, we're going to strongly prefer Juggernaut over um, Immolate here. We can get them both. <laughs> hmm, how much do I actually want Medical Kit here? Ideally, I'm using Second Wind to get rid of the statuses, not playing them directly. I can do something like Immolate True Grit Remove. do like removing a strike quite a lot.
I think paying this much money for two rares is too much to do. We've got other ways we can solve the boss still. We've got lots of card wards coming up. Let's do this. Okay. Does that mean we can take the Burning Elite now? I have an Immolate, I have a um, Liquid Memories, and I have a Gambling Ship Bag of Prep. I also have a Disarm for Book of Stabbing. I think we can probably do it. Go this way now. That way we get an extra Relic. We get less upgrades, but that's okay. We've got an Armaments Plus. We also open up our Pathing next act. Yeah, let's do this. Gain a relic for a ride. Guess what? With Bank of Prep Gambling Chip, we always draw this curse on turn one, and then we always discard it. So it's kind of like it starts in the, dis in the discard pile. And we get a relic in exchange. I'll take it. That relic upgrades our True Grit, which is pretty sweet. A great fight for Evolve, plus feel no pain. Gotta kill this cultist. It's okay. It's fine. Gotta take damage to make damage. Nice chain reaction there. Um, I want that for next turn. Okay. Thank you for not making this complicated. Chosen one. HP, still have our two potions. Almost Strike can be a piece of the infinite combo that we can form. Although it does require an upgrade for that, I think it's well worth picking up for that possibility. Jay Dublinson with the 22 months. The other second wind is also okay. Uppercut can serve quite well also, busting through artifact layers in Bronze Automaton. But with a infinite piece put before us, I think we should take it. Max health, fat gremlins. With gremlin leader attacking us on turn one. What a day to be alive. No sign of our immolate, alas. But we do get impervious disarm, at least. in this fight. Fortunately, Immolate won't kill them next turn, at least not alone. That's fine, though. We get weak and frail for a while as well. Immolate, hello? Son of a gun. That's unfortunate. Alright, you gotta die. Just how it is. Okay, that's vaguely acceptable. Although not what you want to see, right? 
Blood for blood's not even enough to kill it. Okay, the good news is we can headbutt the immolate, maybe. The bad news is I can liquid memories it instead, I guess. We're going to get 100% attack next turn if I can't kill a gremlin here. So, feels almost mandatory to liquid memories our immolate. Don't love that. But this is definitely one of the nastiest burning leads to get the leader here. With a really awkward draw and a bad initial summon, I'm not going to mess around in this fight. I think it's a really bad idea to do so. Okay, now we can again set up the Headbutt Immolate to kill the fresh wave of minions. Problem is we won't have any block. With 7 strength, Grum Leader could decide to absolutely slaughter us here, which would be very unhappy times for us. The second wind, I guess. I really want to use either of these to delete the other, so it won't. Okay, no attack. That's good. Okay, okay. Merciful Gremlin Leader. We are through this situation, and I'm happy about it. I'm pretty sure we're through here. 18 health left. Guess I'd better take Pummel Strike then. The only way to guarantee we get what we were looking for here. By looking at one more card. And that is something that I will happily take here. Exit from this fight, thank you. What a nerve-wracking experience. We end up taking zero damage, but it just as easily could have been 50. We do get a potion back. We also get the Tungsten Rod whenever we would lose health, lose one less. And a second Feel No Pain, which I will take. Now, we ended up spending two of our potions, which hurt a bit, but I think worth it to get the Burning Elite in the bag here, Act 2. And now let's upgrade Pummel Strike. Or I could upgrade Immolate. You know. Food for thought. Now I'll upgrade the, the uh, Pummel Strike. We'll see how this next Elite goes. It's the Book of Stebbing. We got Disarmed turn one. Which you do like to see. I'm going to lose the Carnage here. I'm not ready to play it. I could do Bash True Grit. That sounds good enough, though. Keep that upgraded Bash for later. It's okay to take a little bit of damage here. Each time we get hit by the book, we gain a wound, which will only fuel the deck further. I'll willingly take a little bit here. One plus three. You get two wounds. You get the rest of the powers in play now. Anything I want to headbutt? Let's headbutt the True Grid, yeah? We can go Feel No Pain and Flame, headbutt True Grid Defend. Or I can play headbutt afterwards and put Bash on top with the Sundial set up. Let's do that. Feel No Pain and Flame. Defend. Headbutt. Bash. Anger. Now we can play Bash. Immolate. Defend, defend. Seems good to me. Hm. This is 13 block per card, so just playing a second win is a full block, actually. Easy life. What 
a great time to draw Reaper. Give me my health back, please. And set up Sundial, please. We actually used the Sundial in this fight quite meaningfully, so I'm happy we had it. Look at that. 71 health out of the Book of Stabbing. The book gives us its own counter, the Bronze Scales. We're back up to two potions. And if I want, there's a Wild Strike Plus here, but I don't think that I want that. Epic of Evisceration. How am I going to beat Bronze Automaton? Hmm. I'm kind of worried about that fight now. The Novella of Needles. I need to know what's in this chest, that's for sure. We're going to open this. Shame and an unceasing top. Does that work? That might work. We'd really have to burn down the deck, though. Oh, yeah, we have Anger? Lesbian Ninetales, thanks for the three months of support in advance. I can actually see this, um, this working quite well. I'm thinking about going to the shop, though. I'm going to take this. I'm a little worried about our automaton fight currently. Little Hawk, what does the ironclad drink in the morning with his breakfast? An immolate. Tasty. my face, unfortunately. I want these potions for the boss. We don't actually have good card draw, do we? Hmm. 't so now we can we can beat the bronze automaton with a pommel infinite it might even be depending on how the draw order lines up that we actually benefit from the bronze automaton's minions stealing our cards because they can take immolate away from us for example I can lose this forge potion. All right, so our job here at the shop is to remove nothing and take a corruption, I guess. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm. If I take a Corruption, I can't play it for a while. Yeah, it gets me almost there. It's not enough. 
So we have a few more uh, undesirable cards we have to get rid of. We're gonna keep the shame because second win can dispose of it. It's better to remove strikes at the moment. I think this is the point at which I wish I had taken the uh, Runic Cube instead of the Curse Key. Yeah, I think we should stick with the plan. I, I think I agree with that. Adding cards is not going to help. Not even the Corruption at the moment. We should have a win con for this boss fight. Although I'm worried it'll take too long. Good luck to us. Haha, <laughs> okay, we can't take this. Even more curses would be unacceptable. One of the downsides of the curse key, unfortunately. And we should upgrade the other pommel strike for the ease of simplicity here. I think so. One dark embrace would make our life a lot easier, that's for sure. That's with blue candle. Definitely. Hundred percent. Okay, we're super playing double feel no pain. This is only six healing. Immolate does a ton of damage. Need to win this fight. Bird knows the secret of the bronze scales. That's okay. Unceasing top, go! The power. Um, this is the wrong number for the relics to be on, that's for dang sure. Let's try to fix that. Can't fix that. Fair enough. This is also a infinite piece, potentially. It definitely buys us time, because it's a good card. Get in here. Okay, we could upgrade one card before the Bronze Automaton fight to try to make things a little bit easier. I guess an Immolate upgrade could help a bit by improving our AoE damage and therefore also improving the damage we do to the Bronze Automaton. Could upgrade in Flame for just a little bit more damage, or we could upgrade Evolve in the event that we plan on playing Immolate more than one time. I do kind of want them to steal in Immolate, but there's no guarantee they will. Pen Pen, thanks for the 36 months, three heckin' years. That's right, we have a block positive infinite now. All we need to do is be able to get the deck exhausted down to the Shrug It Off and the Pummel Strike. We're gonna want some Burning Packs and True Grits to achieve that. Zagasu with 38 months of support. Hmm. It also to even just rest for 14 health if I'm really nervous here, which I kind of am. Although if we can cut a time off of the f a turn off of the fight, it'll be even better. I guess buying ourselves a turn to get set up is an option. Hmm. Guess I'm struggling to see the Inflame upgrade making a difference here in how this automaton fight plays out. Is it ever banana? I do kind of like the rest line. Let's try it out. 
a little scared of this fight currently. We're just a bit too slow for the boss, is the current problem. Okay, good turn one-ish. Good-ish turn one. Definitely play Evolve, feel no pain, feel no pain. I suppose I want a Pommel Strike, because it would be even better if I drew my exhausting card, the True Grit. I was hoping to headbutt True Grit, but simply playing all the powers is good. We definitely want to lose Carnage in this fight. The goal is to lose every card. Okay, so currently they're stealing Disarm and Flame, which is not desirable. Okay, True Grit is here. We want to True Grit every non-exhausting attack, pretty much. We're still taking Disarm and Flame, I guess. So I'm going to True Grit the Bash, and then second win these block cards. And then I guess I'm just going to strike you. We draw the Ascender's Bane. That's probably good. So I have no compulsion to get Disarm and Flame back. This is probably worth playing, though. We do need to do some damage. Getting that burn isn't going to hurt too bad, thanks to Evolve. Maybe that was the time for Block Potion. We'll have another chance, I'm sure of it. Okay, yes, Headbutt, True Grit. Very important. At every opportunity, we must headbutt the True Grit. Next turn, we can True Grit the Anger. Then Pommel Strike, maybe redraw into the True Grit. Still have enough health to survive Hyper Beam. That's quite important. This first. Now we have to keep True Grit. Tempting, though. I guess we do True Grit, then second win? That's fine. It's worth losing Impervious to get rid of another status here. Okay. This would be the time for the Block Pot. Desirable, of course. I guess we just play in flame so we don't draw it again. It's still important to get rid of as many cards as we can here. Um, we could also activate the Sundial by using the Distilled Chaos, but I really don't want to play these three cards. Running out of time, though, as you can see. Oh, good, we got Headbutt True Grit again. That's good, at least. So we're just down to the, the double pommels or is what's going to make this work here. I think we're going to get there. Second win deleting these two is great. And we full block. We're down to not that many cards. Pummel. Pummel. Second win, delete these two. True Grit, delete Bludgeon. Oh uh, no, True Grit first, don't be a fool. We're down to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards. We should be there. Pummel strike. Pummel strike. Yeah, we're there. 
Now that we can just play Pummel Strike into Pummel Strike. Each time we play Pummel Strike, we try to draw two cards. There's only one card in the discard pile. Uh, and Slay the Spire interprets this situation as shuffling two times for some reason. So you'll see the Sundial incrementing two times. And that means we can play this card back and forth infinitely with itself. As much as we want. We can even arm him and Reaper at the very end here. We have made it through. Looks like we could have done without a rest, but I'm plenty happy with how this played out. GG. We're into Act 3. We get a freaking offering, man. That will speed things up for us. By drawing a lot of cards. Also, only costs 5 health, thanks to Tungsten Rod. Like that a lot better than Exume or Double Tap. But as you can see, that took us entirely too long to get the infinite going. So in order to make this occur faster, we're going to need to remove more cards from the deck and add more ways to exhaust cards. Or we could add more wounds. <laughs> How about a Slaver's Collar? We get extra energy during boss and elite fights. Third option, Snekoi. Randomize the cost of every card we draw. Completely ruins any attempt to go infinite. Seems like a bad strat. We'd rather just take the additional energy output during the elite fights. Helps us get set up in those fights that much faster, although I am definitely a little worried about, say, Reptomancer. Krogzar was hoping for Empty Cage. That would have been pretty nice. Energy will have to do here. Energy will have to do. So, cards we're looking for at the moment. True Grit, Dark Embrace, Burning Pact. Another Second Wind is fine. Multiple shops is good, because we can potentially remove multiple cards across multiple shops, although it's 125 for the first remove, so I'm not so sure about that. And that means we want to keep taking combats, because we need to find card rewards to find cards that exhaust stuff. This deck would definitely take a corruption, as that would make going infinite so much easier, because all of our skills would be zero costs. Although I think the Dark Embrace would be easier. Easier way to do it. Yeah, we definitely want to go for more elites. Hmm. A bit scared of Reptomancer. Uh oh. These jerks. How do we even deal with these jerks? We have Immolate. We talk. Good talk. Hoping we just headbutt to immolate and win in some fashion. Seems things are never that simple, though. But maybe they are. Power potion could be very strong. How does an infinite deal with the heart with the two damage per card and 200 cap limits? Against the heart, we can make it work by alternating pommel strike and shrug it off. Um, such that we are block positive with each loop and dealing damage with each loop. So we can do this any number of times. Shrug pommel is probably also sufficient for time eater as we can play six shrugs and six pommel strikes. Block 60, deal 60. That's enough to win each turn. That's only after we get set up, though, which is the harder part.
I don't have a guide on how to infinite, but that does seem like it could be a helpful thing. Here's the cards you can use. Here's why it's good. Here's what to look out for. Here's your spiker solution. That sort of stuff. Giving me days, they're helpful. Days for days. Good enough. Dupe pot can be pretty strong. Take a dupe pot over distilled chaos here. I think that could really help with an elite in particular. Oh, hello. Tempting time to take 999 gold, but uh, I don't think so. It's a boss fight and a rare relic does sound pretty good. Upgrading everything is a little overkill. All their important stuff is upgraded anyway, for the most part. We have too many, yeah, too many things we need to remove. Um, and one of the rare relics we could get would be the Peace Pipe, which would be a game changer for us. Do I think Infinite is more consistent than a Barricade Body Slam deck? All depends on the Infinite deck and the Barricade Body Slam deck. You build the things that uh, are offered to you. We haven't seen Barricade this run, to my knowledge. So in this run, Infinite's going to be more consistent than something that doesn't exist, right? You can talk at length all you want about what's better, quote-unquote, in general, but truth is there's no such thing as a general Slay the Spire run. You're in a specific run with specific circumstances each and every time. Talking about some hypothetical neutral state is totally worthless. Take that, Exanerd. It's nice to have five energy in a fight, though. I just realized that. Definitely don't need to go infinite in this fight, though. Just need to get some health back from Reaper here. Please drop a burning pact. Thank you and good night. Oh, Tori Tungsten Rod, that's awesome. But does it help us get closer to a win con? Not necessarily. It merely buys us time in the all-important heart fight, which is it's pretty valuable, actually. This means that any attack less than five damage does zero damage, including the heart's multi-attacks. Total immunity to the first two multi-attacks from the heart. And if we time our disarm, we can do better than that, even. That's pretty sweet. True, buying time is very important for this deck. That I will admit to. Am I even going to this shop? Currently I can afford the double remove. Let's do it. Oh my. Okay, now we're starting to talk. I can do a card remove and an on-sale offering, or I can buy the Abacus. Every time you shuffle the draw pile, gain six block, says the Abacus. That would let us avoid having to do Shrug Pommel. We could just do Pommel Pommel for the heart. 
Although I don't actually think we need it. Interesting. Power through is also kind of insane here. Although it doesn't help us get to an infinite, it, it helps us block like crazy. <laughs> that said, I'm not sure I'm taking this Abacus. Ah. The Order of Rod and Tori matter? No, it does not. It has the same effect either way. The, um... Tori always applies first. <laughs> Baylorbot says Baylor will pick the Abacus. Oh, oh no. <laughs> will he, though? Will he? That's right. Offering will deal five to us. Also note that Offering and its ilk are not attacks. So, Tori could not possibly affect this no matter what. Tori only affects attack damage. And I want more card rewards. This path is bad. Much bigger and better things now. I didn't play the Evolve, huh? I did not. I'm concerned we might get surprise slapped at some point here. Surprise. Love that. More angers is better here for sure. Only one more turn. Which hopefully won't be too bad. We'll see. It's arguably grounds for the dupe plot here. We're doing 2048, which would leave 42 damage, depending on what we draw into here. Well, I could draw into a bunch of angers. We'll see. Trust in the dreidel. Mind. Bash is the top card, so we can do bash to save some health, or we can just take our 30 something damage, I guess. My face. We've got Reaper, we can heal it back. Not too surprised that that guy hit us hard. I'm just glad we're not fighting Reptomancer. It's 
all needs to get played. Okay, now I feel pretty safe in this fight. Start whittling the enemy down. 45, no prob. I've got armaments impervious for you, friends. Take that. Don't need to play this. Play happy with Reaper this turn. Burns are just fodder for the second win, for the most part. Although, this can happen. And pummel strike. Yikes. Definitely not what we meant to draw here. Uh, although we do take very little, actually. Actually, we take zero. I forgot about that. Never mind. Nothing to be afraid of. Your face. Play offering here. That feels better. Okay, we're out of that fight. We scored ourselves an Akabeko Sever Soul. Can get rid of non attack cards, which is sort of helpful. I think any port in a storm here. Akabeka with uh, Reaper is actually awesome, now that, now that I think about it. I'm sorry for what I'm about to do to my own deck. Good talk. Bad talk. Oh no. If I strike it, I might take immense damage. If I don't strike it, I'm going to get a curse. really can't afford the curse, so I just have to risk it here. Okay, that's pretty low as far as damage goes. I'll take that. Could have been much worse. Could have been like 50. Yeah, 52. That's not good. Life's not good. Why is life so difficult? We block 28 plus 12, take 12? Or I headbutt pummel strike. We take probably more than that. Hmm. Well, with disarm, it can't be that bad, right? Much better. Okay. Get the debuffs extended, but that's fine. Still fine. Still chipping away at me, though. Not good. Help! 
you have a rest site coming up? Okay. I'm okay with that. All right. I think we have control over this for the moment. We'll be able to get some of our health back, I believe, if I do this correctly. Only if I do it correctly, though. Dude is really rude today. What is your problem, sir? Give me the Reaper, come on. Okay, guaranteed Reaper with Vol next turn will heal six. Acceptable. Back to 32. Upgraded feel no pain. Not sure about that. Buys us more time, but slows us down further. I have to open this chest to get the blue key so we get another curse. Bummer. We do get an upgrade, though. So we can upgrade one of our Feel No Pains. Or the Evolve. Let's upgrade the Evolve. That will help a lot in the Time Eater fight. Then we have to open this. We get a Pain, which is fine. And the Sapphire Key. And I'm going to have a Snooze, I think. No. <laughs> oh, no. Mistakes have been made. We can buy another True Grit, though. That's probably still worth it. Yeah, and the Fiend Fire, too. Now I'll just buy True Grit. Like I said, any port in a storm. This will be sufficient, I think. I hope. I pray. How do you feel about Giant Head? Giant Head could definitely go badly. Repto could be a lot of healing. Remove Curse Event would be so good. I think we should maybe take the events here. Should be okay in the boss fights. Glowing Tesseract could really help. What do you got? Dark Shackles, Panic Button. Secret weapons okay. Purity. Exhaust up to three cards in your hand. I like all of those. I'm gonna recall here. Let's take one more event. It's a fight. Show me Reaper early. Please and thank you. Nice. It's only going to heal for 24, because we can't heal off the Spheric Guardian, but it's still 24 healing, which is amazing. Thank you, Akabeka. Aki Becky. I'm immune to pain. Also immune to having no cards in my hand. Oh, 
Not bad. The Orochi Man, thanks for four months. Third of a year down. I still don't think we need Rage where we're headed. Because we have the Shrug. None of these exhaust stuff. So what I'm going to do is upgrade our True Grit. And let's see how we do. I think we're going to be okay here in these boss fights. Though it could take us a little while to get set up. I actually really like Secret Weapon. I didn't realize how good it was at first, but now I've, I've come to realize it's actually really good. Because it can fetch um, Seversoul, hilariously. This is a very good second win, that said. Let's True Grit the Anger. Secret Weapon... I guess I can Secret Weapon for Reaper here, get some more health. No, I discarded Reaper. So we can go Armaments, Second Wind. Good. Tipper Soul deals 22. Doesn't feel like it's worth playing, though. What's with all the curses? <laughs> Unfortunately, I've determined this is how we're winning the run. I'd say it was a good plan. Stop hurting me. Oh no. Oh yes. Oh yes. All of this. Uh oh. Made a mistake though. So that I can only play one more card and I need to play two more. Could use the dupe pot now. I don't love that. I really want that for later. Or we can take a bunch of damage next turn, and either option is appealing. Let's put the nasty attack, too. Okay, so we should use a Dupot here, unfortunately. Otherwise, this is really way too scary. Here. We block for six times eight, which is not quite a full block, no notably. Uh, I can trigger the strike as the last action. That'll block a bit more.
foolish. Okay, with the debuff into a multi-attack, we could face quite a lot of damage. I'm actually not sure what to do if that happens. Looks like we have to survive one more turn here, at least. Oh, shoot. That's bad. Hmm. We'll have the second wind at the very end, huh? And that's going to increase to 28 by 3 or something. I think we can block for 70 something. second wind. Full blocked. Thanks to Tungsten Rod, Tori. And then we can win before we have to do that again. So that's how an infinite can beat Time Eater. As an example. Should we just win now? Okay, that was good. Don't like that we had to use our potion, as we probably can't buy another one now. But uh, it is what it is. This fight is definitely much easier to go infinite in. Pro tip. Excellent turn. So let's secret weapon for anger. Use true grit to delete anger. Use second wind to delete my entire hand. Wrong with unceasing top. Cool. going to need a Volve in this fight. And I don't want to make the bird any angrier than they already are. Good impervious turn. Great Dark Shackles turn. Need the shrug in this fight. That Silver Soul was actually good. Good Silver Soul. Look at this. Five turns, and we're here. That's actually really good. If we can do this in five turns against Heart, I think we win. I'm really worried about Shield and Spear, though. We're not that good at that fight. We don't do enough front load of damage, and they will kill us really fast. So I have no freaking clue what we do there. Lock motive. How's it going? Two hours later. Can't really control whether the sundial is set up. That's not quite true. I can finish with Emelaine. Okay, sundial on two, ink bottle on nine. Although, that's right, it's not quite the end of the fight yet. Cool. We have 
of the turn. Yeah, Evolve on turn one against Shield and Spear could help a lot. We only get to look at 15 cards out of 35, though. So we have no assurance that Evolve will be on top, unfortunately. Oh. set up. I don't think I get much of a choice, huh? No, this is how it is. Alright. We're on to Act 4. I am a little nervous here, Twitch chat. I don't think this got quite good enough. We didn't get that Dark Embrace, which would have been really crucial to making this a bit more explosive. And we had to use a potion. Both of these things make me a little uncomfortable. Guess I'll upgrade a Feel No Pain. There can be a Dark Embrace and the Power Potion all there wants. I really wish we could afford the second Power Pot. Uh, the question is, which fight do we need it for, I suppose? Janez, thanks for the 19 months. Let's go. I have no Weaken in this deck. Definitely worried about... The one two whammy here. Let's see what our turn one at least looks like. We got Evolve. Okay, we got Evolve, Feel No Pain, and an Offering turn one. This has got to be pretty reasonable, actually. Let's discard everything except these three. This gives me hope we can do this without the Power Potion. We can even Reaper after playing Offering here. So I think we go Armaments, Evolve, Feel No Pain, Offering. See what happens from there. Were there ever rewards after Act 3 going into Heart? No. There has never been rewards at that point. Used to be the end of the game. So there was no need to reward the player for winning. Okay, good-ish turn. Okay, looks like we can play Reaper to go to full health, and then... Probably don't want a second win, because I've got True Grit. So we can Purity, Pain, and Defend. Disarm doesn't do really anything here, but it does remove an artifact layer to make Dark Shackles potentially work next turn. I realize we're about to draw one card. That could be awkward. Secret weapon. So I can just seek anger here. Um. Or I can seek carnage and get rid of it. Let's do that. We get two burns directly on top, but that'll actually increase our draw. We got Sever Soul to get rid of all this garbage, too. Excellent. Let's go Impervious Offering here. Still no pain. Let's pummel you for a minute. Delete everything? Delete everything. I suppose we stay facing this way, then. Don't play Anger. Next turn could be really bad, depending on what we draw. Definitely worried about this one. I see a basic defend and a basic headbutt here. It's not a good recipe for generating a lot of block, but uh, this works out okay. Second win gets rid of Armaments, Defend, and Flame. 
You can even headbutt, pummel strike, and draw more first. Let's do that. Headbutt, pummel, keep drawing. Excellent. Okay. True Grit, the strike, second wind, everything else. Now we're close. This is no good, though. This stings a little bit. Nothing we can't handle, but I don't love it. We're taking seven currently. Don't think I want to play Anger. there. Draw Pummel Strike too. So let's go True Grit on Bash. Second Wind. are okay at the moment. We go to 41, we take six. So, second wind is the only way to full block, but I'm worried that next turn we can't full block if I do that. Still too many cards here. Let's see, we have five, nine. Nine is too many. Okay, in that case, we want to do this. Take some. So we can draw more with Evolve. We actually need the burns to provide the bonus draw. I don't like that we're dropping lower in health, though. There we go. Now we're there. Nine gang, rise up. Okay, we kept the potion for the heart. That's really encouraging. This barricade or feel no pain or dark embrace could all make a big difference here. We do want to set up the the uh, sundial for sure. Corruption could also help. Actually, I think corruption would be bad because we need the shrug as part of our block infinite. Mom, he's cheating. Good enough. Pantograph, we're at full health. What is fire breathing? I don't think fire breathing helps, though. We're getting rid of all the statuses and curses. But Pantograph is excellent. If we get full health plus the potion, we have an actual chance here at Twitch chat. We'll take fire breathing off the potion, maybe. Keep these cards, play the True Grit, uh, play the Feel No Pain, delete this strike, discard all this. And we get Evolve turn one. This is a very encouraging turn one, let's say. Could maybe decide to wait on the potion till we find armaments, but we're mostly looking for Barricade or Dark Embrace, which don't care. What do you got? Barricade. I don't think we take this corruption, as aforementioned, because the corruption will cause our shrug it off to get deleted, and we need shrug pummel strike to be the combo that wins. What about the brutality? Draw one more card each turn. Does help a little bit, actually. Brutality isn't useless. But I think uh, the barricade will allow us to 
accumulate enough block, it will be fine. I think Barricade is, is the better pick here. Oh, and we got Purity turn one also. We can get rid of some good stuff. I'm gonna take Beat of Death damage because we can retain all block and we take one less damage per card. We wanna play the powers first, then the block cards. Now my face. Good, we get rid of the shame with the second wind as well. And I can play the inflame, which we'll also get rid of. Okay, we burn no prob. We get 22 block that we retain. It's the big hit first, followed by the multi-hit, that's great. So all of this 22 block will be helpful here. This is looking really good. delete as much as possible here. I'm going to True Grit the Headbutts. We're going to Secret Weapon, Sever Soul, and I'm going to use Sever Soul to delete the hands. Which will also give me a ton of block. I don't need that stinky armaments. Can't even hurt me. We could disarm to make it zero, and I might as well, because we're retaining block here. Let's activate Sundial. Second wind. Excellent. I think this is in the bag, Twishad. The bag of preparation. we draw exactly... No, there's still one more. Okay. Now there's only exactly five cards. We draw exactly all of these five cards. No risk. We're completely 100% secure in our victory. GG. What a tough run this was. Uh, it seemed like it was very, very strong at the beginning, but we started to limp towards the end as we figured out how to get our win condition to work, despite <clears throat> three different curses in the deck, which arguably stood in our way majorly here. I'm not sure that I would have felt comfortable trying to employ this kind of win condition without the experience of the Mastery Challenge, where we tried to win with two copies of all the curses in our deck, 
across different runs, so I had a lot of experience managing curses and still figuring out a working deck. It's pretty sweet. Did Barricade even help? Barricade definitely means we're leaving the fight with more hit points. I think. It helped us block the turn two hit. And I don't know if we would have had enough block for turn four without the barricade. And again, the secret to making this work is that Sundial shuffles not once, but twice when Pommel Strike is played. Um, for honestly unknown reasons. It just considers that to be a double shuffle, which shouldn't even be a thing. Mostly, the game gets very confused when you try to draw two cards, but there's only one card left to actually draw. Stop hitting yourself, Mr. Hart. GG. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And don't forget to check out Baylor Lord Plays for variety content. Click the blue Baylor icon to subscribe.